yellow. Yesterday, uh, in search for a place to eat, to have some dinner, fucked out of my mind, I ended up going to this beautiful restaurant called La Tusi, where I had the most amazing dinner and have a good chat with the sommelier, Joy Campanale. And today, I returned to the crime scene to talk with the guy. Let's go. So this is Vini TV, a wine program packed with broken English and passion for wine. Now we have penetrated the New York restaurant scene and we have a friend of mine, a sommelier, Troy Campanale. Could you tell the wine freaks out there who you are and what do you do at the moment? My name is Joe Campanelli. I'm the beverage director and owner of Lartuzzi and Dalanima restaurants here in the West Village of New York City. Okay. And how did you get into wine like back in the day? You know, I started off in uh, in the kitchen, and I knew I always loved being around. So you were a chef. I started as a blind cook, well, yeah. prep cook. Let's okay. call it. <laughs> uh, peeling apples, and pulling heads out of lobsters, and that sort of thing. Um, I knew I always wanted to be around food, but what I really loved about food was taking care of people, um, with it not necessarily being in the kitchen and doing the same thing over and over again. And uh, I saw wine as being really a natural progression. And when you pour someone wine and, and they love it and they're enjoying their meal, there's some, I get a lot of gratification out of seeing that. Yeah. Okay, what are people drinking today in New York City? Like, what are people talking about? What are people interested in? Well, luckily in New York we have a really savvy sort of dining, dining clientele. People are pretty open-minded um, and so they drink whatever I tell them to drink. <laughs> but, we get a lot of people asking for wines from the south, from the Sicily. Um, sometimes Primitivo and Negro Moro, people are starting to know these wines. They realize that some of the more obscure wines and southern Italian wines can often represent really good value. Yeah. Okay, so you picked a wine for us today. And you want to share some info about this wine? Oh, I love this wine. Uh, Jasko Gravner, uh, Anfora Breg 2002. Um, Jasko Gravner is this crazy progressive guy up in Friuli and um, as I was telling you before he was sort of the first one to do stainless steel and then the first one to do big oaky wines and now he's the first one to bring Anfora back into the winemaking tradition so his wines are you see these are they're very old orange um, so they're skin macerated white wines but also what's really unique about them is that they're fermented and aged in Anfora vats that are buried in the ground and lined with beeswax. That's the way the ancient Romans used to do it. Okay, so what kind of bread varieties does he use with this one? Okay, so in the bread, he's using some international, some native varieties. You have um, Chardonnay, mm -hmm. Riesling Italico, so that's a, a local clone of Riesling, um, Sauvignon, and Pinot Grigio. So, but this is not your typical, like, basic Chardonnay or whatever, like, what do pe what can people expect when they taste this one? Oh, this, there's nothing typical about this wine at all, right? So it's, it's had some skin maceration, and so you see we're serving it in these red wine glasses. I like to decant the wine. Um, so it really feels and drinks a lot more like a red wine than it does like a white wine. So it has this sort of texture. You really get the tannin of a red wine. Um, and I think you also get a lot of the, um, the character of the, of the grape skin. You get some of the yeast. He only uses ammi and yeast. So you get some of the yeasty character. Uh, and we also do serve it at, at, out of the cellar, right at uh, red wine temperature, so at 55 yeah. degrees. Yeah. I think that these wines are a lot more expressive um, at a little bit warmer because of how they're made. Okay, let's see. Okay. It's a really intense flavor for the It really fills your mouth with all these kind of dried fruits and herbal notes. Yeah, that's that's really good. This wine, is, I love this because it's such an enigma. I have to keep going back to it to try to find more and more things. It's incredibly complex, but in such an unusual way. Yeah. So now we're going to check the uh, the wine menu, or list, or wine bible, I think, uh, from Lartusi. Can you tell us a little about your wine portfolio in, in the restaurant? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, the first, the first page there's a quote from one of my favorite winemakers, Alex Kristancic from uh, Slovenia, the Movia Winery. It says, water for body, wine for soul. So we really do try to create, to choose wines that um, are, are really interesting, that are made by people, yeah. um, that, that have a story to them. So you can't find Gato in this? 
<laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. That's a good you, thing. You've yeah. made a lot of people happy about it. On this wine list, I think it's pretty unique. Mm -hmm. uh, for every single region, yeah. we have a map of Italy right here and the region highlighted and then the whole region is blown up here with all the different appellations, all DOCGs and mm -hmm. DOCs yeah. um, over here and then a list of typical foods. Oh, okay. And then we have the white wine, rosé, and then all the reds. You see uh, Piedmont, we have lots and lots of reds. But I love that. How, how many wines do you have in like total? It's close to 400. Close to 400? Yeah. I've been in love with Sicilian wines lately. I think that especially the high altitude Sicilian wines, especially made around Mount Etna and yeah. in Vittoria, can be really elegant, really earthy, speak to the place that they, that they come from. What grape varieties do they use? Um, on Mount Etna, they're using a grape called Norello Mascalese, mostly. Okay. It's very similar to Pinot Noir. Um, it has, uh, it can get a little bit riper, uh, but since it's grown on that volcanic soil, yeah. you get that smoky, earthy ashiness. Yeah. And these are some of the highest altitude vineyards in Europe, so they can be, it really? can be extremely elegant and earthy. And then um, in Cerasuolo di Vittoria, they're doing blends of Nero d'Avola and Frappato. So a little bit higher elevation, but also that Frappato can give you some lighter, spicier notes um, and really balance out Nero d'Avola, which sometimes can be a little jammy. Okay, so uh, Italy is definitely your your country like when it comes to wine. Do you have, like outside of Italy, do you have any like areas that you're interested in? Some wines, red varieties, like... Yeah, I mean, the, I tend to... Do a little name dropping for the viewers. A little name dropping. Uh, I t well, I tend to uh, like more old world wines. Mm -hmm. um, because I really like wines that speak of where they're from, very terroir-driven wines. Yeah. And they're totally made in the new world, but it's just much more often that, that you find them in the old world. Um, I've been drinking a lot of uh, Loire Valley wines, yeah. um, uh, Riesling from pretty much anywhere. I'm a Riesling slut, I just love it. And, um, and Champagne, and grower Champagnes. Uh, the single vineyard champagnes? The single vineyard champagnes. Not the ones made by the big houses that yeah, buy from yeah. 300 people all over the region. Yeah. The guys who farm the vineyards naturally themselves and painstakingly craft this beautiful work of art that's a grower champagne. Yeah. So there's this guy, Egli Aurier, who's uh, my, absolute, my absolute favorite. So anyways, when you are in New York, come check out La Artusi and check out the great wine list that they have and trust this guy, the sommelier, so, because there's too many wines to pick from.